What's good, Cubers? It's your boy Matt, and it's time for another card of the week, and I got some spice for you today. Let's get started. This week's card of the week is Commence the Endgame from War of the Spark. Four in double blue, you get an instant. This spell can't be countered. Draw two cards, then amass X, where X is the number of cards in your hand, and amass means put X plus one plus one counters on an army you control. If you don't control one, create a zero zero black zombie army creature token. Even the gods shall kneel. What Commence the Endgame represents is a big blue finisher most of the time. You're gonna try and cast it and smash your opponent. You're essentially flashing out a large zombie army to hopefully eat your opponent's creatures and draw cards. And I want to show you just how good this is, so let's go to a normal game situation. Your opponent has Tajik on an empty board. Now they think the coast is clear and they're going to swing Tajik and maybe mentor something as they come in and smash your face. But that's fine because you've got Commence the end game. You cast it, you draw two cards, and then you amass a zombie creature token. If you had just three cards in your hand and then you cast Commence the end game, that means your zombie army is a 4-4 and that means Tajik dies. Now, this situation is not uncommon. This is not magical Christmas land. This is the norm. Amassing a 4-4 zombie army is pretty standard for commence the endgame. In fact, it's not uncommon for endgame to amass a 6-6 or a 7-7. I've even seen a 14-14, but we'll get to that in a minute. So commence the endgame is really really good. Let me show you some other neat synergies that it has inside your cube, and it probably has these synergies already. All of these cards allow you to flash back commence the end game so that you can do it multiple times, which again is just dumb. So, Torrential Gear Hulk, you can flash him down, and when he enters the battlefield, you can cast an instant from your graveyard without paying your mana cost. If you have been lucky enough to get commence the end game and Gear Hulk, you can make your opponents cry. You can cast commence the end game first. And then later you can flash in Gear Hulk to commence the end game again. And this is where that 1414 zombie happened that one time. Don't get me wrong, that's Magic Christmas Land and we got to go there once. But the ability to flash back commence the end game with cards like Gear Hulk, Snapcaster Mage, even Baby Jace would let you discard commence the end game and then later you could flip him over to Jace the Telepath and then cast commence the end game out of your graveyard and use it that way. So there's all kinds of neat little blue synergies that allow you to replay commence the end game because it's an instant. So that's another thing to think about. When we look at the average cubes, six drops, they're normally playing Gear Hulk, Sphinx, and Frost Titan. And I'm going to tell you right now, if you're still playing Frost Titan, stop. He's, he's just he's not good enough guys. He's not good enough anymore. It's time to cut him. His time has come. As a matter of fact, you could argue that mm, all the Titans are cuttable. Even Prime Time. Yep. They might be cuttable. All of them. Even Inferno Titan. But the point is, you can cut Frost Titan and if you're not sure what to cut, I'm going to make a controversial statement. Get ready for it. Cut Consecrated Sphinx. Not permanently, not for forever. Just play test commence the end game in his spot. It draws you cards, it makes a finisher, that's kind of what Consecrated Sphinx does. Just food for thought, cut Consecrated Sphinx and try Commence the Endgame instead. Okay? So, where does this leave us with Commence the Endgame? In case you haven't realized, I think this card is pretty dang good. Now, before I grade it, I do want to say I've gotten some questions about what my grades actually mean. So, I've created a little chart for you guys. An A means the card is a cube staple. It means you should definitely be playing it. You have to make room, cut stuff. B is a solid cube card, which means, you know, it's good. Play it. Absolutely include it. But if you don't, because you have something better, that's fine. And maybe the card's not going to last a year inside your cube because Wizards is constantly printing this new stuff. C is a budget card or a card that is interesting, but it's not optimal. And then D is just don't play it. We don't want to play anything that's below budget or just fine. So no D cards and F's like why? 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 These are like vanillas. Why, why, why are you doing that to your cube? Don't do that to your cube. Don't play D's and F's. Okay, 
back to in-game. So convince the in-game is going to be, for me, a B+. This card is almost a staple. That's how good I think it is. The only reason it's not a staple is because there's so many great blue six drops. You could play Gear Hulk, you could play Sphinx, you could play Endgame, you could play Dream Eater from Guilds of Ravnica. By the way, that's another great budget alternative. You should be playing these cards in your cube. And speaking of budget, did I mention Endgame is 25 cents? This card is a quarter. All right, this card is a quarter. You're so welcome. That's right. Your boy Matt, looking out for your wallets. That's going to do it for this week. I want to take a minute and thank you guys. We just hit 200 subscribers. 200 subscribers. Wow. Uh, I, 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 wow. Thank you guys. I really, I really appreciate it. Um, if you got a card you want us to do for Card of the Week, leave it in the comments below. We'll get to it for you. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at Cube for Two. Like, subscribe, click the little bell, do all the things. And as always, and until next time, shuffle up and keep cubing, my friends. <laughs>